Hey everybody, I'm back with another uh, Master Game Analysis based on a, a game that I recently played and uh, a line that I got that wasn't uh, covered by the course, but uh, when I was reviewing this and found uh, some other Master Games, uh, a lot of the thematic ideas that are, are from the course still play here. So this is the position that transposes into what I got in the game. This game actually started with a slightly different move order, and it's interesting, so I want to go back and show you that. Uh, so <clears throat> we're here in the Karakon advance, and we're of course playing this early c5 move. And uh, white responded c3, and we go knight c6, and then bishop e2, which is a move that's not covered by the course, but is actually a pretty common move at the master level, and it's a little bit annoying because uh, white is trying to say, I'm not going to let you play bishop g4, which is sort of obnoxious. Uh, I went ahead and just took captures and then played bishop to f5, which is probably the best way of handling it. And we're going to get some typical ideas of what we can do with this bishop later. Uh, so <clears throat> transposing back into the game, we got this position with the knight already out and the pawn having come up to c, uh, excuse me, come up to e6. And I played knight ge7. <clears throat> and here white plays uh, knight to c3, which is a typical move. And that allows us to get our bishop g4, followed by knight f5, which is a maneuver that uh, we use in some of other lines. Now, it's possible for white to try to stop that maneuver. And they can play something like h3. And I found a cool idea. In that case, we just go the other way. And we'll play bishop to e4 and happily trade off this way. I mean, he can play knight c3. We don't even have to trade because if he takes our bishop, we hit the pawn. And this knight's got to move. And then the d4 pawn suddenly going to fall. So this was just kind of a neat little side idea. Knight c3 was the move that was played. Uh, now we went bishop g4. And knight d2 <clears throat> was the move that they chose here. And uh, so black is, of course, incredibly happy to just trade off our crappy light square bishop in exchange for white's really quite good one. And now his knights are also both a little bit discombobulated looking. They look sort of strange on the d2 and e2, but this is fine. Uh, we go knight f5, and we're going to start applying pressure on this pawn. Uh, white chooses knight to f3, and we go bishop to e7, just developing, getting ready to castle, and just some of our standard moves. So far, even though white has done a bit of weird things, our standard plan and development is still good here. So b3 was the move played. And perhaps this move is against this idea, or maybe he wants to put the bishop to here. It's not 100% clear, uh, but this b3 move is going to give us sort of an interesting idea of something that we can play for in this game. Uh, other than just trying to go all out against the, the, excuse me, the pawn on d4, this is going to give us a hook. And later we're going to see some queenside play where this pawn advances up the board and we start going after the queenside. Uh, so castles, knight to g3. Uh, we go ahead and just capture. Generally, trades are, we're really happy with trades in this. And it's because this pawn is quite weak. Black has no weaknesses. Uh, but he does have a lot of kingside space, so potential for attack. So we're pretty happy to trade off some minor pieces if we can swap off the rooks. Uh, and then really we can just target this d4 pawn, and the weakness there is going to grow as the position uh, simplifies. Takes, and now we get a5, which is this idea of advancing down the board and creating a weakness here. And we're going to try to develop play along the a and the c file. And the queen comes out to b6. Note that... Uh, one thing that <clears throat> is kind of important to note is this knight's now gone from c3. And when the queen comes to b6, uh, you generally don't like to have a knight on c3 because knight a4, we can kick the queen back, and then the knight gets to set comfortably on c5. Uh, so rook to e1, and now a4, just advancing. Uh, white played bishop to d2 here, but I looked at uh, like what happens if they play bishop to b2, which seems like maybe that was the point of b3 in the first place. Uh, and so I actually analyzed a pretty long variation, and I think it shows, uh, I'd like to show you the whole thing, even though it's quite, quite long. It could be a whole game in and of itself. Uh, but it shows some of the typical kind of play that we might be able to see when we go for this queenside sort of attack, which uh, we it makes sense for us to play on the queenside. This d-pawn is giving us extra space. We have this knight uh, that's jumping a queenside. We already have one rook. Our queen can come out to b6, put pressure here. The bishop is already here. And this rook can quickly come across. And there's no pressure at all on our king side right now. And it's not even clear how white is going to get some pressure there. So I looked at something like takes, takes, 
Uh, here we give up <clears throat> the A file potentially uh, because when this means that when we bring the king, bring the queen out, we're hitting B3 already. Uh, bishop C3, which is defending the pawn with tactics. The idea is that we take this guy, you play here, we got to move out of the way, and then you go take, and then white has some active pieces. Uh, so here, black takes a moment out to play H6. This is giving uh, him some space on the on the king side, and also uh, I noticed in a lot of variations that this um, idea of playing h6 and then g5 threatening g4 comes up a lot. This is an idea to put away in your bank. And the idea is that we're undermining this knight that's on f3 so that there's nothing going on uh, in terms of defense on the d4 and we're really going to pile up on it. Uh, so queen to a4 and then hitting g5. And this also kind of forces the g4 to happen because we don't want to undermine the knight. Also gives our king plenty of breathing room. We're totally safe there. Uh, but it forces g4, which we're going to see that this g4 hole is going to become significant later. There's going to be a big problem here. So we continue on bishop to b4, uh, which is just trying to systematically remove defenders. First we played a6, and then g5, threatening g4, threatening to remove this defender. Now we're attacking this defender. We're blocking the queen from defending. We're just systematically removing defense from d4. Bishop takes, queen takes, and we're again, we're happy to continue trades. The knight comes in, and now rook to c1. And this, at first instinct, at first sight, looks like maybe white's going to get active or we're going to have trouble. But if white tries to get active here, it's simply bad. Uh, we're going to go rook a, we're going to get active ourselves. And he tries to go after the pawn, we give a check, forces the king back away, and now knight to d3. Already eyeballing this f4 square we talked about earlier hitting this pawn on f2, and sure, we're going to give up the b7 pawn, but this is going to take so long to generate any actual counterplay. King to g3, just trying to defend it, and it doesn't really help because we play rook a2 and we renew the threat. Rook to b7, and now we just play knight x knight x f2, and I mean, maybe we're going to come back to e4. There are even some mating ideas that could possibly happen here if the king gets trapped along the king side of the board. If white just tries to belligerently, as quickly as he can, race the pawn up the board, it's too slow. Uh, we can play knight to d3. We're not really attacking the pawn. We're actually headed to f4. We're pointing out the fact that uh, it used to be f2 that's weak, but now that that's fallen, uh, g2 is weak. So we go knight to f4. We're actually threatening checkmate immediately. So the knight has to move, and we can go ahead and just attack the knight. The knight can't move. It's stuck. We're up a free, we're up a free piece. We're going to grab it. And now we just slowly bring our pieces back to the board, back to the other side of the board. We're going to round up this pawn, and then the game's going to end very soon after that. B7, one important move we got to make, king g7, so that this rook c8 doesn't come with check. And king f3, It's there's no way this king is ever going to get over here to help. It's just not going to happen. We play rook to b3. We're going to support the knight coming in. The knight comes in, and we're just going to bring it around to the c4 square. He can attack our rook, no big deal. We just come forward, now the rook's too far away, and we get to play knight to a5. We collect the pawn, and we'll come and collect this pawn, and this pawn, and this pawn, and we'll queen whichever pawn we feel like. It could be any one of them. Anyway, I thought this was a really cool variation, just showing some typical uh, kind of play that can happen. If we go back to the game, uh, instead, of <clears throat> instead of bishop to b2, white chose bishop to d2. And here we played queen to a3. Uh, just hitting the, trying to set up for the pawn so that when we take, we have immediate pressure. It was probably better to immediately take <clears throat> instead. And, oh, excuse me, got ahead of myself there. So after bishop c3, uh, <clears throat> which again is trying to defend the rook with tactics and defend this pawn. And, excuse, and so we played rook to c8. And here's where I was saying it was actually probably better to take the pawn immediately. So we capture here, we play rook fc8, and we're setting up the same threats that actually happen in the game, uh, but we avoid this pawn takes a4 move, which is what happened a bit later on. Here, queen c2, incredibly awkward move to make. Uh, rook c1 isn't going to work so great either, trying to defend the bishop. Uh, if you're not sure why we need to defend this bishop, uh, pause for a second and take a look. And you'll see an idea that's going to come up here pretty quickly. And then, you know, then white can, or sorry, black can continue with h6 with similar play like we saw in that previous line. So instead, uh, rook to fc8 was played immediately. 
White chose to capture here, which allows us a typical idea, uh, which is knight takes e5. It's a nice trick that happens kind of a lot in this sort of position. The point is, is that if the bishop moves or we, he attacks our queen or anything, we have this in-between check here. Going back, uh, we saw that rook to c1 is an interesting move because it doesn't actually help defend because it's going to allow us to take control of the a file. We can play a takes, takes, and then the rook's going to invade onto a3, and this pawn is going to be falling quite shortly. Going to be big problems. So white chose to solve that by capturing on a4, allowing this trick. He hit the in-between move, no problem. We can just grab here. It was actually a bit better for black to, excuse me, for white to take back this way and give up the bishop. That bishop was junk. It was stuck behind a bunch of dark squares and no prospects. This knight is at least active and it controls some annoying squares on our side. And if to say queen d2, we had to drop back to try to defend the rook. And we can go in and try to, <coughs> we can try to trade, uh, but we're gonna run into, I mean, we're still better. We're, we're much, we're still better, but white is active. His pieces actually kind of make some sense. They're coordinated, the pawns are defended. It's not clear how we're going to get in and attack these pawns. And uh, this would have been a bit better. Instead, you know, a5, uh, giving us this chance to take the rook. We're happy to get rid of the rook and leave this sort of cruddy bishop. Uh, play queen takes. We have to play queen takes because it defends the bishop. Uh, queen to c6. And now bishop to d2, just staking out of the way. And now bishop f6 makes a lot of sense. Uh, we're putting pressure on the d4 pawn, which uh, thinks that now the e5 pawn missing, uh, this is an easy route to take. Queen to d3, defending. Queen c4, again, we're happy to trade pieces, because when we trade pieces, it becomes easier to attack these weaknesses. We have one, two, three, four potential targets that we can go after right now, whereas black only has the one pawn on b7. Uh, queen takes, rook takes, and a rook to b1, taking over, uh, trying to get some counterplay, gives up this pawn, moves the rook here. The idea is he's going to come across and defend <clears throat> whenever we eventually try to take here. He plays rook to a4. We're going to try to grab pawns. Bishop to b4. And if we can allow a moment for him to consolidate, this might be sort of obnoxious. Uh, but bishop to d8, and we're going to grab this guy almost immediately. Rook to c2, and again, making luft. We don't want to get ourselves back ring mated. We have all the time in the world. We already have a passed pawn. We don't have to be in a great big hurry. We're going to get what we want. It takes this moment. So f4. Trying to, I guess, slow down the pawns, but it's not really going to help. Bishop takes, takes, and we take here. And this gives up the pawn. We grab this guy. White goes for activity. But this is, we're going to find out that these rooks, even though they're really super strong and super active, they're not really doing too much. And we're going to have a way to untangle pretty easily. Rook to f8, just holding on. And these two pieces defend our only weakness really easily. And these rooks are left with really nothing to do. Rook to d7, I suppose making sure that this guy doesn't advance. And black begins an operation to untangle. He's going to play up here. He's going to bring the king up. And we're probably going to play something like g5. And when g5 gets played, that's going to allow open the f file and give us some opportunities to defend this pawn with this rook. Probably if maybe from f5 itself. So g6, king to h2. Uh, just sitting doesn't really help. If you can just sit back and forth with the rooks, play rook b7, rook a4, we come here, g5. We're not really sacrificing the pawn. We're going to get it right back. Takes. We can go g4, we'll collect this pawn, come across to f4, f5. We can move the king up to g6, and then bring the other rook across and begin attacking pawns. Uh, so king to h2 was played, but this doesn't really change anything. Uh, we bring the king up, brings the king up again. We give prepare to come to the f file, again opening up this g5 idea so we can defend here. And rook to a7, rook to f1 actually just threatens checkmate. It's sort of a cute move, not really necessary, but yeah, fun. Maybe maybe the game would end immediately. Goes king to f6, and <clears throat> here white decides to threaten to take the a5 pawn. No big deal. We just step out of the way. Again, if he just waits on this file, we're going to end up with this g5 and taking and opening the f file plan again. 
So rook to a6, trying something. We go king f5, and nicely we play... It goes back to a7, no big deal, f6, and the pawns have moved up off of the 7th rank, making these rooks totally useless. We'll be able to easily defend our new quote-unquote weak pawn on e6. We have the king already defending it. It's safe from checks. There's not, a, there's not even a check to be had from white. And we'll just bring this rook around, and we'll probably collect this pawn. We'll get some checks and some counterattacks, and then we'll combine that with threats of pushing our pawn. And for those reasons, white went ahead and resigned here. I thought this was a really nice, instructive game, and uh, with some really cool ideas. Uh, the big one being, though, this idea of where <clears throat> we play a5 and really just try to gain space on the queen side and try to create some attack and pressure there. I thought this was really instructive and something I hope you guys can take into your own games. Uh, if you're interested in learning the Chess Goals course, go ahead and check out the description, and we'll have links to where you can get a hold of the course, as long as full PGNs is it of this game and many more like it. And uh, I hope you guys enjoy this. Like and subscribe. And thanks a lot. Bye-bye.